Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. Let's give our moms a round of applause this morning. The greatest gift God gave to us boys is a mother. Amen. Amen. And to my beautiful wife, just want to say happy Mother's Day to you. You're amazing. Uh, For those of you who uh, don't know, uh, I'm the lead pastor here at at Crossroads Church. My name was, I forgot my name. (laughs) Anyways, and I just wanted to say, um, I just lost our mom just a couple weeks ago, a few days ago. And uh, thank you guys for all the sympathy, the cards, the chicken, the more chicken, the more chicken. (laughs) Uh, All the stuff that y'all did, the texts, just uh, so many things, just... Um, moments of gratitude, and I just appreciate that so very much. But I know this, that my mom, she is not sad. (laughs) She is rejoicing. She's dancing in heaven. She's got her own mariachis bands up there, and I know it's just going to be awesome. So um, this is not a, you know, a morning service. This is, we're going to celebrate, amen, because we know that's our hope as as a follower of Jesus. That's the hope that we have. It's like, man, one day we know that we're going to miss them here on this earth, but one day we'll be reunited together with them to rejoice for all eternity. Amen? I love that about that. So this morning, what I want to do is um, take a look at a mystery that just came across my head this last few days. But before I do that, I heard about a joke with little Johnny and his Sunday school teacher. So little Johnny was in school, and the Sunday school teacher asked Johnny, tell me, little Johnny, do you respect and listen to your mama? And little Johnny's like, oh, yes, ma'am, Miss Crabtree. (laughs) And the teacher said, do you say your prayers before eating? He goes, oh, no. He goes, we don't say prayers before eating. He goes, what do you mean you don't say prayers before you eat? He goes, well, my mom cooks good. They don't need to say any prayers before we eat. (laughs) I thought that was cute. And so uh, all of us, every single one of us have something in common. We're all here because a mother gave us physical birth. I also recognize that in this moment, there are people that maybe have not had a good relationship with their mom, and it's, this is a hurtful day. This is a hard day for them. There are others who, uh, like one of my daughters, she wanted to be a mom, have a birth, but she couldn't give birth to a child for whatever reason, complications. And so that's difficult for some some of us, like myself, you know, we've lost a mom here recently, and, it's, and there's a sting there, but there's also hope that we have inside. And so there's various uh, situations taking place, and my intention this morning is not necessarily to address all that. My intention is to honor all moms. And if you are in a situation where you um, didn't have a really good relationship with mom, um, man, I am so sorry, because I had the amazing best mom of all. There, she did no wrong in my eyes, and uh, in my brother or my sister's eyes, and it's just a beautiful thing. So it hurts. At the same time, we rejoice because she's in a better place. Amen. Um, but here's a great reminder that before you were born physically from your mother's womb, you were born in the heart of God. That's true. And therefore, you have a purpose. The scripture says in Psalms 139, it says, you were formed, you formed my inward parts, and you knitted me together while I was in my mother's womb. And um, you need to hold on to that. You are valued. You have purpose. You're accepted by God Almighty. Amen. And that's all we need to know. Amen. Right. But this morning, I want to talk to you about a mystery that I don't quite understand. And I still, I don't know if I ever will, but it's something that I'm experiencing right now because of the context of my life. And it's going to start in Proverbs, the 30th chapter, verses 18 and 19. And it says, there are four marvelous mysteries that are too amazing to unravel. Who could fully explain them? One is the way of the eagle who flies in the sky, the way of a snake that glides on a boulder, the path of a ship as it passes through the sea, and the way of a bridegroom that falls in love with his bride. That, I can identify with that. When I first met Natalie, it was like, I love you. So three, two, three, four in the morning. I mean, I pursued her. Natalie says I was stalking her. And either way, I won. And she's just a beautiful gift to, to me personally. But there is another one that I want to add to this. And um, I'm not adding to scripture, but this is one that I'm dealing with right now. And it's the fifth one that's a mystery to me. It is the love that a mother has for her child. It's a mystery to me. I mean, how do they do this? 
How do they continue to just pour out? I was, this morning, I was doing some research. I was like, man, what have mothers done uh, to their children to protect them or cherish them or, you know, hold on to them? And, and I came across a couple of stories. These are true stories. You can look them up. One is a story about Christina Simons. Simons. She's 23 years old. She was uh, in a two-story apartment, and all of a sudden, there's a fire. And she can't get out, and she has her little baby. And so she has one option, two options, I guess, just to stay in there and die with her child or to jump out of the window. And she jumps out of the window and she uses her body as a cushion. And so she puts her child next to where all the softer parts are and she takes a dive out the window and uses her back, lands on her back on purpose to spare the child. She breaks her back, the doctor said that she'll never walk again. Uh, but good news, she's walking again, she's alive, the child is alive, and everything's okay. The other one that I read this morning, I was like, I was just, it just blew me away. I was like, man, who, who, would I do that? I don't know. Man, my kids give me a hard time. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> Depends on what day it was, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I have another gal, Chelsea Camp. Chelsea is pet sitting for a friend and all of a sudden, the dog turns on the child and becomes a child shredder. And of course, you know, you, you hear, hear stories about, man, when you start messing with mama's babies, watch out. And so all of a sudden, this lady went Mike Tyson on her. And so she starts attacking, mama starts attacking that dog with her fist and with her teeth. <laughs> Got around that, grabbed that dog and bit the dog's ear off got her fist and shoved it inside of his mouth and kept it in there. And obviously, you know, she came out alive. The injuries, there was a lot of injuries. The damage was done to her fist, but both of them are okay. They're injury-free. The child is alive and the mom is okay. And it went, but think about, the, think about just the mindset of that, right? It's amazing to me. Moms, I have a question that I want to begin this message with is this. Why do you love your newborn? And it's probably a silly question, but why do you love your newborn? Why do you do what you do for them over and over again? I mean, as I thought about that a couple of days ago, I had to think about some things and write some stuff down. Think about it. Listen, for eight or nine months, this child that's inside of you, all they've ever done is just brought you pain. <laughs> they distorted your body. Chemicals are reacting certain ways because of all the stuff that's going on inside. You start breaking out in pimples. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? You know, you start waddling, you start walking funny. You, you, you know, the, the, the scripture, you know, not the scripture, but the, the facts say that, you know, the, the, the breasts become a little bit more tender and they enlarge, which is kind of the cool thing about marriage. I mean, uh, getting pregnant, but still. So, hey, let's stay, let's stay pregnant all the time. <laughs> I'm sorry, babe. I don't mean that. But anyways, <laughs> so she told me not to say that. And I don't know why it is. It is anyway, so, so there, you know, you're, you're forward. Well, you're like this. <laughs> and your back starts hurting because now you're leaning forward. You start to waddle when you're walking. It's just all kinds of stuff for nine months. It happens, right? To top it off, you know, the, the he or she, whoever's inside, or maybe two or more, they're putting pressure on your bladder, and all you feel like doing is peeing all the time. Weight gain, you're throwing up in the morning, you're throwing up at night. And some women even say that, that they start growing hair on different parts of the body when they're pregnant. <laughs> you got to start shaving, what have you. The belly button begins to pop out, your any starts becoming an Audi. And it looks a little bit weird. You grow large, you feel stuffed. You're eating weird stuff. You're eating crackers and sardines and all kinds of stuff. When Natalie got pregnant, we had three girls. When she was pregnant, I gained 20 pounds. And I have not lost them since. Each one of them, I gained 20 pounds. Seriously, right, babe? I got proof. And my favorite food is all the stuff. It's like, man, is there such a thing as the husband's, you know, oh, yeah. is there? <laughs> you got it too. Dude, you got four children, five children. Dude, that's like 100 pounds. <laughs> you look good, Jeremiah. You look good. <laughs> but, um, 
we were, we were eating Fritos and ice cream. I love Fritos and ice cream. And still to the, I was, not you, I was. This is about moms, okay? What were you eating? You were eating anything and everything. And then to top it all off, you know, you're going through all this dynamic, all this change, and then if that's not enough, every now and then they start kicking you. They start punching you in the stomach. That child that's inside your womb, one, they're occupying space that's rent-free. They're eating food that they didn't fix. And then after nine months of that, you're trying to keep them warm. You're trying to keep them safe. You're trying to keep them fed. And they never ever turn around and say, thank you, mom. They just want more. (laughs) More. So after nine months, though, finally, without any warning, they come out, bursting out. It's not like a gentle, hey, I'm out. It's like, I'm out. Get me out of this place. And so how do they greet you? Do they say, hey, mom? No, they just start crying. It was you, (laughs) right? But who do they cry to and who do they want to get close to? Mom. Isn't that amazing how that happens? The room's too cold. The nurse is ugly. (laughs) The blanket that they put on you, it's all rough and stuff. But they still run to mom. They want to see mom. When mom touches her, it's like... I think it's just so beautiful. And so, why do you love that child? <laughs> it's like, what, what, is, what is that thing inside of you? I mean, when you're giving birth, it's like the husband's around. Honey, can I help? No, get out. It's your fault. <laughs> you're biting down on bullets. You're tearing up the towels there. You're sweating, drained with sweat. You're stretched out. Your muscles are expanding. It's, it's crazy. It's all this pain at the same time. Man, if anyone else treated you this way, man, you'd be fighting them. If anybody else treated you, you'd be angry. I know if anybody else treated Natalie that way, she, she's going down with them. <laughs> but whenever that child came out, my girls came out, man, Natalie's face was just like, it was just, it's, I can never forget the face of the love that she had for my girls. If it was me going through all that, that child would be grounded for the first five years, (laughs) period. (laughs) Oh, man. And then, to top it off, that's just the beginning. That's just the first nine months. They come to this earth, and little do you know, but now you'll later, later you'll find out that, man, they're going to keep you awake every night for hours upon hours. You're going to lose sleep. You're going to have no rest. But it, does that matter really? No. Why? Because the love of a mother is a mystery. It's absolutely amazing. I can hear my mom's voice. Now, I know I came out and mom said something, but I can just imagine, ay, mijo. Que chulo estás. I want to make you some enchiladas. And that's how it began, folks, in my home. But here's what I know about moms in this room. I bet every single one of you who's have, who is a mom here, you felt that. Hmm. I, I, don't, I, I dare ask that there's one mom in here that says, that wasn't me. And maybe it wasn't you because you're, you know, they, you're, you're under anesthesia or you, were, you, know, they pass, you passed out had a C-section or whatever. But whenever you woke up, you were aware. It's like, man, Natalie's first words were like, let me count her fingers. Let me count her toes. And she just went on, and I'm like freaking out. I was like, oh, my God, I'm 18 years old. I'm having a child. <laughs> like, what am I going to do? Right? <clears throat> so it's amazing. It's, it's, they should have put number five on that passage of Scripture. But can I just flip the script here for just a second? And I want to talk about God for a second. I want to ask God a similar question. So, like, God, why do you love your children? Because this is we're in a church. This is why we're here. We're going to honor our moms, but we're looking at the gospel because that's the truth. But why does God love his children? Why does God love his newborn children? Man, no disrespect to our heavenly father, but didn't we cause him a whole lot of pain? 
As a matter of fact, when you look at Scripture in reality, we drove his son to the cross because of our foolishness. Why does he tolerate us? Master, why do you tolerate us? Why do you continue day after day, give us a fresh sunrise and fresh flowers and beautiful things to see when we don't deserve it? Every single one of us are uniquely created in his image. We have our very own fingerprint. It can't be duplicated anywhere. You're specially, specifically made for his purpose. You're his. But do we, ever, do we ever praise him for that? Very seldom. The very breath that we breathe even right now, do we ever say, hey, thank you for that? We hardly ever think of those things. We complain about the weather. We bicker about the toys that we have or we don't have. We take pride when everything is going well, but we begin to blame him when everything's going wrong. We have this thing in Crossroads Church is like, um, when we don't understand, we still continue to trust. And we'll never let anything that's wrong in our life keep us from worshiping what's right about God. Because he's worthy of all that. Amen. Amen. Somewhere, someone right now is using his name in vain. But yet he still aggressively is chasing after us to show us who he really is and to show us how much he really loves us and cares for us and is approving of us. Say amen. He fills our world with food, but we blame him for hunger. We begin to drink to cover our pain while he's extending out his hand to heal us. Daily, the birds sing to remind us of a new fresh start, but all we hear is the shame of our past mistakes. We give more applause to a ball carrier carrying a pigskin down the field than we do to the one who created us and gave us all things for his benefit. We pollute the world he loaned us. We abuse the bodies he gave us. We ignore the son he gave to us and died for us. He has every reason to abandon us. He has every reason to leave us, to be angry, to forsake us. But does he? No, he doesn't. It's amazing. Daily he gives us all that we need, our daily bread. A fresh start of mercy, a fresh start of forgiveness. His love never ceases. His mercies are new every morning. His love never stops. His love is never placed on pause. His goodness flows every single day from the sunrise to the sunset. He's trying to get your attention so that you can understand and know that he loves you. He cares for you. He sees you. He hears you. He understands. Our wrong doesn't affect his love. We don't lo he doesn't love me any less if I fail, and he doesn't love me any more if I succeed. How do I explain that? I can't. It's uncomprehensible. But the closest thing I can connect the dots here is when he gave me a mother. The unconditional love of a mom is the closest I can think of to be a reflection of who my heavenly father is. It's close. It's still not measured up, up to par, but it's, it's pretty close. I don't understand the two. Let me share a couple of scriptures that talk about that. Woven throughout the scripture, you'll see how um, God's love is like that of a mother, a deep, unrelenting love. Isaiah 66 chapter, it says this, as a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. Isaiah 66. I, and, I, you know, my dad was here in the first service, and my mom's sisters and stuff, so I made it personal for them just to honor them. But still, I'm not going to change them. This is my dad. Awesome. He's amazing. He's a good-looking guy. <laughs> but this is what's important. Isaiah 49. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she's born? Sometimes mothers do forget. Sometimes we wonder. That's the sting in our heart for many of us. And even though she may forget, God says, I'll never forget you. I have engraved you in the palm of my hands. I woke up a couple of days after mom passed and I had this idea of some images that I wanted to put a tattoo on her arm. And I hired a tattoo artist to come over to the house and uh, my brother, and I didn't realize that my brother and my, my sister were going to come and do it with me. And so I, you know, we did this just because it's just one way to just to honor and to pay tribute. Probably looking back after a couple of days, I like, probably should have done that. But that's okay. 
<clears throat> there's another passage that says, and the Apostle Paul's talking about it in Thessalonians, it says, we were very gentle with you like a mother caring for her little children. Isn't that beautiful? I love about that. So to all the moms in the house, can I just say this to you? And I would admonish you in the name of the Lord, please keep loving, 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 loving your child. They need you. They need to hear that from you. You might not believe in them, but believe me, those words penetrate deep into the heart of a child. And they'll go further than you could ever, ever imagine. It's the greatest gift they will ever know is a love that not only comes from dad, but a love that comes from a mother. And for all of us who have moms, and that's all of us children, here's what the scripture says. Honor your mom. It's a command. It's not a suggestion. Honor your mother. You want to live life long on this earth? Your mother will put you out. She brought you into the world, she'll take you out. <laughs> Honor your mother. Give her a call. Write her a note. Ask for forgiveness. Pray for, pay for her meal. Give thanks to God if she's still alive here on this earth. God will grace you, and you'll be glad that you did. And for some of us, the reason why we hurt so much when we think about mom is because the very thing that she wasn't able to give you, you long for. The very thing that you long for that she wasn't able to give you, it's still a legitimate need that you have in your life. And even though you can never get that from your mother, probably while you're here on this earth, I want you to know something, that you can redirect that to your heavenly father because you can get it from him. Can a mother forget? She may forget, but he says, I will never forget you. I have engraved you, he said, in the palm of my hands. And that right there, my friend, would free you because that's what God does. He makes provision for everything that you need. These are certain things I pray for my wife all, all the time. And I pray, one of the prayers that I started praying here recently this last year, it's like, that God, be to Natalie what I can't be to her while I'm here on this earth. I want to be. I long for that. But there's places in her soul that have been wounded and fractured that I can't touch. But he can. And the sooner you do that, Lord, the better off I will be. Okay? <laughs> I'm just saying. And so um, I was very fortunate, and I just want to be a little personal and vulnerable with you this morning. Um, I was very fortunate to have an amazing mom. I mean, she was crazy amazing. And so I'm learning stories and stuff about her <laughs> these last few days that I never knew about mom. Mom was pretty radical. She was pretty fun. Always smiling, always singing, always making tacos. Her reward language for me was, oh, mijo, I'm so proud of you. Here's some enchiladas. Let me make you a taco. I mean, it's just on and on and on. That's how mom loved on me. And I could really tell that, man, she was really expressing her unconditional love to me because she had all this food on the table. She goes, come on over, mijo. I made your favorite stuffed pork chops with my dressing. The only thing I'm upset about her is that she didn't give me her chile recipe. I'm like, oh, we made $200 off of one bottle. Just imagine. <laughs> but um, before she left this earth, I was fortunate. We didn't know she was going to pass that night, and she went peacefully. She just transitioned like her mom did in her sleep. She re went to rest. But that morning, um, I was there, and, and I would have fun. I'd go over there to, to her room, and I'd feed her. I'd feed mom because she was getting weaker. We didn't understand why. And so I was playing around with her. I'd feed her oatmeal. And I was like, say the magic word, mom. <laughs> She's like, please. I was like, okay, here you go. Then pull it out, put it back in. Of course, we were laughing and stuff. But that morning, for whatever reason, I said, mom, you know, today I got her an iPod um, with a bunch of songs. And I said, I, I bought this for you, mom. I said, I want you to just pay attention and listen to the songs. Some of uh, Mark McConkie's songs, some of your Jeremiah songs, a bunch of Spanish songs. Un dia la vez and, you know, all these and uh, she was listening to him. I said, but mom, I want to read two passages of scripture to you. And so I read her Psalms 23, which is her mom's favorite passage, my favorite passage, my favorite Psalm. And then I read it to her in Spanish. I tried to read it to her in Spanish. And I couldn't do it because I didn't know what the thing said. So I just pressed the play button and she listened to it. But I said, I want to share with you my favorite Psalm. And my favorite Psalm, our favorite Psalm is Psalms 37. 
But for whatever reason, that morning, I said, Mom, my favorite psalm is Psalms 34. And I began to read it. And she's just contemplating, looking up. And after I read it, she just said, thank you, Mio, that's so beautiful. And so I want to close with reading you that psalm. May it minister to you like it ministered to her, like it ministers to me now. As a matter of fact, Jeremiah, I'd love for you to write a song about Psalms 37. 34. Yeah, 34, sorry. That's my favorite one. But it goes something like this. Psalms 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and he delivers them. Oh, taste and see. Oh, she's so beautiful. That the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who puts their trust in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There's no want to those who fear him. The young lions, they might lack and they suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord will not lack any good thing. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and he delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions. Look at that little lady of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He guards all of his bones and none of them is broken. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust him him shall ever be condemned. Thank you, mijo. That's so beautiful. Isn't it so beautiful? And my response was like, I love you, mom. I'll see you later. As a matter of fact, several years before, when I was with her mom, my grandmother, those were the exact same words I told my grandma. I love you, Grandma. I'll see you later. Now they're in heaven. Who knows what they're doing? Making empanadas for Jesus? I don't know. <laughs> and those last moments, you know, you, you hold on to those last words. I didn't know those would be my last words, but I held on to them, and I'm going to hold on to them the rest of my life. And I began to think about the last words um, that Mary gave to Jesus. And I, I'd never thought about this. I'd never researched this. But there are four statements that Mary shares um, when they're having a dialogue with Christ. The first one was uh, before he was born, when the angel came and announced that she would be born of a child, even as a virgin. It was when Mary submitted to that. He goes, I'm the Lord's servant. Be it unto me according to the word. Whatever it is that you say, that's what I want to do. I love that about Mary. That's great, great advice, isn't it? great guidance for us to follow. Great example. The second was when um, Jesus was lost. So he was in the temple. He probably wasn't lost. He knew exactly what he was doing. But they were looking for him for three days. And Mary said, Mijo, son, what are you doing? You ever heard that from your mother? What are you doing, Jeremiah? What's wrong with you? A lot. Yes. Your father and I have been so worried about you. We've been looking for you. The third time was when they were performing the first miracle. And this is my wife's favorite statement from Mary. He ran out of wine. (laughs) Then all of a sudden, the last one is the one that we need to hold on to because I think the last one is the most important one. And this is one that I love. I quote it a lot. I hear it a lot. It's what I've built my life on. And it is the prime definition of faith. When Mary turns to the disciples and said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And that's my prayer for you this Mother's Day. Moms and children, whatever Jesus is telling to you to do, I encourage you to do it. Follow through. It's not enough just to believe. You've got to be a follower. Be a follower of him. Some of you guys are just fed up with life and you're frustrated about life and I want to encourage you to lend yourself and yield yourself and give yourself wholly to the one who loves you wholly the one who can fill every gap in your heart the one that can hold you throughout all life here on this earth and 
the life that we're going to experience to come in eternity. Whatever he's telling you to do, do it. And I can also hear the words of Jesus right now. Here's what he's asking you. Here's what he's telling you. He says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy burden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn from me. My yoke is easy. My burden's light. Come to me. And for those of us who have already come to him, here's another thing he's saying. Abide in me now. Abide in me. Those are the two callings that Jesus has for us. Come to me is the initial one. And then abide in me. Remain in me. Live in me. It's all about him. Amen. And that's my prayer. Is that we point you to the son who loves us more than anyone on this earth. So happy Mother's Day to all of you. Moms that are here, I love you so much. Now listen, for those of you who are 75-ish or older, I don't have a mom here on this earth anymore. I need you. If you know how to make empanadas, please call me. (laughs) I want to just sit down, have some coffee, listen to your stories, and I would be so pleased to do that in the weeks and months to come. I would love to do that. Please help me. I need you. As a matter of fact, it's scriptural. The older, teach the younger. Amen? The younger, don't be so proud that you dishonor and disrespect the advice of those who've gone before us. They know a whole lot more than what you think. Amen? So happy Mother's Day to you guys, uh, to you moms. We love you. Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, you're so good to us. We're so thankful that we have scripture to lead us, to guide us. We're so thankful for moms today, Lord God. We want to honor them in a special way. You know exactly what they need. Their hurts and holes and fractures and things in certain moms' hearts, Lord God, that only you can heal. Master, we're asking you in the way that only you can do, touch that spot. Touch that spot in a way that they know that it's you. So we just commit all this to you. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed with that said, amen. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.